church say amen. amen. Oh, I tell you, there's just a sweet spirit flowing in the house this morning. I don't know whether it's a combination. We're all glad we're out and not stuck and shut in because when it started snowing yesterday, I'm going, Lord, have mercy, not again. And uh, so I'm just so glad that the Lord was merciful. And I know Sister, <laughs> Sister Gladys, game time, it's one o'clock. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh Lord, now that's the Skins fans that don't worry about it. They're not going nowhere. <laughs> but we're, we're going to pray for them. <laughs> of course, we've read our scripture this morning from Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 through 25, looking at this passage of scripture and seeing the things that God had spoken to Joseph. And many of us are so familiar with the story, knowing that God also had to speak to Mary. This was the message I had hoped to deliver last Sunday, and then I was going to focus on the message God got from Mary today, so I'm combining the two. My topic uh, last Sunday was going to be, Joseph, I have something to tell you. And then my topic this week is going to be, Mary, don't you weep. So I'm combining the two. Joseph, I've got something to tell you, Mary, don't you weep. So I want to look at the dilemmas that are posed in this passage of scripture for both Joseph and Mary, and I want to look at it from their eyes. Because here are two devout Jewish people, both of whom are descendants of David. Joseph through the line of Solomon from David and Mary through the line of Nathan who is the son of David. That's why when you read in Matthew uh, the name just before this passage that I read where Joseph has a father I believe by the name of Metathan if I go back and look at those names right before his. And then if you go over, yes, Metathan begot Jacob and Jacob, the father of Joseph. And then if you go over at Luke and you read the genealogy backwards the way we do gene genealogy today, you'll see that it mentions Joseph who was supposed the son of Heli. Now, that always posed a problem for me until I did a little research when I was taking some courses, uh, working towards what I'm doing right now. And I got to looking at this genealogy and got to exploring it a little closer. And then I realized that God did something to bypass the curse that he had put on Joseph's line. And he performed. Pro prophesied it back in the time of Isaiah, and this shall be a sign unto you. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. Because a child draws its blood type from the father. So if Joseph had had any part in it, there would have been a curse on the child that Mary bore. So how is God going to bypass the curse? Very easy. Conceive the child of the Holy Ghost and allow Joseph to take the woman that he had decided to marry as his wife, but he didn't touch her until after that baby was born. So whose blood type 
did Jesus have? He had his heavenly father's blood type. Very much God, but yet very much man. And when I discovered that, a chill went up my spine. And then I could understand how, as the choir just sang, God is awesome. And then by using Mary as the vessel to bring forth the child, there was no curse on the line from Nathan. But God was able to keep his promise to David of an eternal seed, an eternal kingdom, an eternal throne, and still honor the curse that nobody on that line would sit on the throne. Joseph would have been in line to sit on the throne as king. However, there was a curse. But yet if you go over to somebody else in the royal line, there was no curse on the line from Nathan forward. So here's Mary, also the daughter of David. So I want to look at this dilemma from both of their eyes and look at the fact that it took an act of faith and an act of trust for both of them exhibited these things. Because if they did not trust God, the story might have been different than what message is in there for us today. Now let me paint this picture. Here we've got a man of virtue engaged to a good looking young woman. Now when it says that they were betrothed, they were just as good as the ink was signed on the marriage certificate. It was a done deal in the eyes of the Jews. Once you were betrothed to someone, it was the same as you were already married. Because if you look at the passage a little closer, it says that Joseph was ready to divorce her privately. Now, according to Jewish law, he could have taken her to the gate of the city where the elders met, and he could have said, according to Jewish law, three times, I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you, and state the reason why she would have been forever publicly humiliated, and probably before Joseph could have walked away, they would have picked up the stones and stoned her to death. That was the law. Now Mary, on the other hand, let me look at her side of the story because I'm beginning to get a, just a tad ahead of myself. Let me look at Mary's side of the story here. Here we have a virtuous Forward, looking forward to marrying Joseph, the man of her dream. Virtuous woman, by the definition of what Solomon gives in Proverbs. And she was just so excited. Can't you see the gleam in her eye? She's going to have her wedding day. She got the man of her dreams. Now, She's been discovered to be pregnant. Now, one thing, and I'm still trying to figure this out, and the older I am, the more I'm beginning to understand how some of these old school mamas and grandmamas and mothers of churches and missionary saints and friends, if you know what I mean, could look at a young lady and say she was in family way. I remember one time one of my cousins, after she got married, my grandmama looked at her, baby, you all right? That was her way of asking very nicely, are you pregnant? 
And depending on the part of the country that you're in, some of y'all, I, <laughs> y'all laughing, but y'all know what I'm talking about. And depending on the part of the country where you're from, the words might have been different. Honey, are you in family way? <laughs> Baby, reckon what done happened to you. <laughs> Girl, where you been? You know the different phrases that Mary probably would have caught. Let's keep it real this morning. But here she is, a saintly girl, good-looking woman who has been virtuous, loved God, spent time in the Word, kept the Sabbath the way she did, she supposed to. I can see her now lighting the Sabbath candles with her candles with her veil on and going through the process of lighting the candle for the Sabbath as, as was the, the, the lady of the house custom, and she learned that from her mother. And now she's got this dilemma. Brought up in a good religious home, a good Jewish home, almost said Christian. And in our day, we've been brought up in a good Christian home. Y'all know the story. Now she's got to figure out what are the neighbors going to think? What's my parents going to think? What's my husband-to-be going to think? He's going to think I'm a loose woman. He's going to think I've gone back and picked up the habits of one of my ancestors before she turned her life around and became part of the family line of the king. Y'all know the one I'm talking about, Rahab. Remember Rahab the harlot who let the spies down from the wall? That had been her profession. She was a harlot. But yet when she turned her life around, when she said, your people shall be my people and your God shall be my God, all of what she'd done in the past was wiped out. She became a lady. She ended up marrying the man that brought her into the family and she became a, 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 in the lineage of the king. Mary's probably thinking, I didn't go back to that. I'm virtuous. She was found to be pregnant and hadn't been with anybody. Now here's the crisis. Joseph could have taken her to the gates of the city and had Mary put to death. His deep love for her made him not want to take that action. I can just imagine loving somebody so much that you don't care what they've done. Have you ever loved anybody like that? Oh, got quiet on that, didn't it? Y'all just think, wait a minute now. You know, there's always got to be a challenge in the sermon for every one of us. This is challenge number one. Have each of us ever loved anyone to the point we don't care where they've been or what they've done, how they look, what their pedigree is. We just love them because we love them and we don't want to see anything happen to them. But I want to tell you somebody loves each of us like that and his name is Jesus. And God did it for the whole world. That's why he sent him. Joseph tossed and turned in his night. And finally, when he did go to sleep, the angel starts talking again because he didn't want to take action. Mary, on the other hand, who had never, and I emphasize never, been with a man must have been devastated. My God, the sleep this poor girl must have lost because she was a young girl. She probably wasn't even in her 20s. Devastated because they married young back then, you know. 
Wasn't that long ago people married young. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. I got a great grand, great, great grandmother when she married. I think she was like 15 or so. And when my great grandmother was still raising, was raising her kids, she still had six young children at home she was raising. Uh, you know, so I know how folks married early back then. Uh, young folks, don't try this at home. It ain't going to work today. <laughs> but here now she is devastated, devastated, because she's in a position that she didn't allow herself to be put in. She's wondering, what is going to happen to me now? I've lived all of my life living faithful and holy and righteous as I possibly can. And I'm in a position now that could cost me my life and I've done nothing wrong. And in the midst of all of that, God intervenes. Remember, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about God setting the stage by talking to Zacharias. Now, after 400 years, so now here, about three months later, the angel is talking again. So he goes to Joseph in the midst of his sleep and wakes him up and says, Joseph, I got something to tell you. It's very important, Joseph, that you hear what I'm saying. Now, you know I'm paraphrasing now, but I got to make this where we can understand it in today's language. Joseph, it's important that you understand what I've got to say. Don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife because what has happened to her is not something that was done in the human realm. Joseph, this is something bigger than you. Joseph, this is something, if you check your scripture, Joseph, this is something that, that I had Isaiah prophesy. You know who your wife is. You know how she lived. Why would you think she'd be anything different but a virtuous woman? And you remember what, what, what Isaiah said in his prophecy? This is going to be a sign. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Well, that's your wife, Joseph. There's a curse on your line, but I'm allowing you to be a part of my plan, even though there's a curse on your line. I'm allowing you to be in the family that I'm going to do something in. I'm going to allow you to raise the child that would be king of kings and lord of lords, that would have come from your loins had there been no curse. But Joseph, I'm going to allow you the honor of being there because you're walking virtuous when some of your ancestors didn't. So I'm going to allow you to stand there in the midst, locked arms with Mary. Don't be afraid to take her. And Joseph, I got to cut this conversation short because I got to go comfort my daughter Mary because she's perplexed, she's worried about when the stones are going to start flying. But Joseph, I just want you to keep that in mind and don't you go into the public and do anything different. You marry her. You take her into your house. In the meantime, he goes to Mary and sends the angel and says, Honey, sugar, baby, you all right. What's done for you was done by the Holy Ghost. You're going to be blessed, baby. I know you're a little confused. I know you know the facts of life. But don't you worry. Sugar, you okay. Now, why don't you go visit Cousin Elizabeth? Go on, talk to her, because I know you probably need somebody to talk to right now. And you know what happens when you read Luke's story? She goes to Elizabeth's house because after the angel spoke to her, she's still confused because this ain't making sense to Mary. She knows what she's done, what she hasn't done. She knows Elizabeth is in family way. Elizabeth can help her because Elizabeth is older, wiser. But you see, God had already done some talking there. And he told Zechariah that 
that the child that his wife was carrying was going to be anointed in his mother's womb. Now, here's Elizabeth now, still kind of perplexed, knowing the angel has spoken to her, but, you know, everything God does, he confirms. So now, Elizabeth is there sitting in her house, probably needing some John booties, and here comes Mary knocking at the door. And as she opens the door and Mary speaks, John the Baptist has a sanctified fit in his mother's womb and begins to dance in the spirit because he's in the presence of the one who he will one day baptize. He is in the presence of the one who will one day be his redeemer. He is in the presence of the one who is going to be the king of kings and lord of lords before either one of them are born. And when he started dancing in the spirit under the anointing that the angel had spoken to Zechariah, it confirmed for Mary because Elizabeth began to prophesy to Mary and confirm what the angel Angel has spoken to her. Sugar, you all right? Come on now. The child you carrying is gonna take away the world's sins. You're anointed, baby. From now on, they're gonna call you blessed. The world will never forget your name. When Mary left that house after that visit, Mary had a song she sang. It's called the Magnificant when you look at some of the early English things. It's called, My Soul Doth Magnify the Lord. Mary had her faith going again. Her faith was increased. She says, I can face anything now because my soul is magnifying the Lord because he's regarded me. My Lord said he could have picked anyone to do what he's going to do. So Lord, I just am so humbled. I'm in awe because you're blessing me. You're giving me a place in the history of mankind. You're blessing me to be the vessel that you're going to use to take away the sin of the world. That's where God intervened. And speaking again after he first talked to Joseph, and Joseph had to listen. You see, that's the thing. When God speaks, we have to listen. And when he spoke to Mary, Mary needed comfort because she was surely stressed. But Mary also had to listen. And when Mary listened, it caused her to have a song in her heart. And in our lives, God comes to us. Yes, sir. In our discomfort. How many times have you been so stressed that your sleep has been disturbed? Oh, you done got quiet on me now, huh? Yeah, this is a Christmas message, but this is also a message of hope. How many times have you walked the floor not knowing which way to go? How many times have you felt like I can't take another thing? How many times have you felt like, Lord, I can't move another step? Lord, it seems like every moment I move, something else happens. Lord, it seems like the minute I get over one thing, something else comes up. The minute I regroup from one doctor visit, I get in my car and drive to a funeral and somebody rear ends me when I'm driving and following the rules and minding my own business and sends me off to a hospital. But yet, Lord, you're still there in my midst. Lord, when I was feeling good, somebody came and said, you got a disease, but when I turned, my face to the wall you healed me in spite of all the odds Lord when I almost lost everything you stepped in and made a way out of no way Joseph I got something to tell you I hear what happened to you and I'm listening because sometimes that same voice calls me by name Walter I got something to tell you what is it you've got to say the Lord to me today I'm God all by myself he says and I need nobody else it is no secret what God can do because what he's done for others he'll surely do for you oh expect your miracle expect your miracle Expect your miracle, expect your miracle, expect your miracle.
miracle because it's already done. While we're trying to figure it out, God has already worked it out. My God. Thank you, God. Is there one this morning 